everyone, Lord of Flames here. So, I decided to review all of these episodes in Mr. Barry Cougar. Five of them. While the episode six is being worked on, since he already finished the script, so I'm going to review all the episodes, which I probably somehow forgot, or probably I left something that I didn't know that was in the episodes this whole time, which I always, uh, focusing on the visuals of the videos or whatnot, or just talking too much while reacting. <laughs> but right now, I'm looking back in episode one. So this idea, this timeline probably taking place around the same month, around that animation movie they did. That was their first Jeff the Killer, Jeffrey Keaton movie. That was supposed to be the new beginning, the new start of Kubi Pasta. And, um, yeah, because Jeffrey Keaton was arrested and noticing the looks of his mask or rather the pillowcase he just ripped and used it for his own disguise. Which I always think about something that you hide parts of your personality. Which, outside of it, you cover, it only shows like you're pretending or you're showing your own fear, your kindness is outside. But in the inside, it's hateful darkness. Hatred! Think of something like in Halloween of Mr. Loomis thinks about what's inside the eyes of the little boy of Michael Myers. Of what's behind the mask. Something like that. But, um, noticing that I had to look back to the credits, no, knowing, noticing I forgot all the, some of the characters' names because it's been a long time to uh, look back to the episodes. Well, Dr. Ferguson is the one who's interviewing Jeffrey Keaton. And, well, ever since he's wanted to know about Jeffrey Keaton, because we don't know what exactly is important to Jeffrey Keaton in this timeline yet, which we already know. He mostly mentioned things about when his father, who discovered something inside the, the asylum building. Which we don't know if this place would used to be a, the asylum before or if it was, but there are these random black liquids or whatever you call it are climbing around the walls. Creepy, huh? Think of something like the symbios from Marvel or something else, which I believe is mostly Zalgo because giving the hint of back in the Wide Mouth, the audio drama, that somehow White Mouth just died and came back to life by Zalgo. And White Mouth made himself the appearance in Eels and Smiles audio drama version, which he only has his cameo appearance around the cells. Because at some point, White Mouth was meant to uh, go there to get Jeffrey out of there. But that plan didn't work. He was caught and put in the cells. Great job, White Mouth. You're not really good at your jobs. Hope he doesn't hear it so he won't try to place any traps around my house. So, episode 1 is kind of it from that part, but noticing that this is probably take because I know I try to forget, try to remember this one character who is the, the ghost nurse, who is mostly the mother of Ben. A different version of Ben in this creepypasta universe. Where she died by getting her sawed off out of the head by Dr. Ferguson, which... 1990, yes, that's the year where she was died, the same year where Ben's born. So, she already died, and we're going to have a few bit references of her, or maybe not yet around this episode to the others. Um, I tried to figure out some theories a bit more, because I, since now, where Jeffrey just take off the pillowcase, where he finally shows his true self. Not because of showing his face, but rather his true self as an evil version. Or the true self of Jeffrey Keaton as a killer. Or rather, a monster. But some reason he mentioned about Steven the Spider. In which I believe he just talking to a random spider, or rather... In the pre in these other episodes where we saw the demonoid looking Zalgo spider, which I think that's the, the one that Jeffrey is talking to. 
if he's talking to a small looking spider or a small or a no a creepy looking demonoid spider because we didn't see it in episode one or not much uh, the appearance of Steven around the audio dramas. So I believe it's mostly the small version of, of Steven. I don't know. If I'll go somehow think about transforming parts of him as a spider, call himself Steven to fake to a uh, trick Jeffrey. So he could try to friend him to use him as another slave or another helper to get his own body back into blood of Jeffrey Keaton or blood Jeff the killer. And we introduce another character named Hank the Guard, who is new to the series, which we then never heard of him around the Audiodramas on the drama series at all, which I thought he died a little bit early, or maybe not, or he quit the job. We don't know yet. But, um, he's mostly taking Jeffrey back to his cell or something until back with the interview. And we're now we're in a cassette tape scene where Dr. Paxton, who's mostly been that nosy uh, scientist experiment on random things, Think of him as another Doctor character, Nazi character in the Captain America franchise, who worked for Red Skull. Think of something like that. But Doctor Paxton is experimenting because this is taking place probably before the rake was made. Because noticing the timeline that this all happens in the year two thousand nine, and the whole event of the other series, twenty fourteen, with the next start where Jeffrey Keaton escape. Yeah, that's a very long year for Jeffrey to live in that asylum. Noticing that he failed once again, wasting all that money, which made Dr. Ferguson upset. Okay, but for my theorize for this one, which episode two is kind of another thing about the creation of the Rake, but not yet. Probably soon in future episodes, we will see the appearance of the Rake. And we're back with Dr. Ferguson interviewing Jeffrey Keaton. But this seems interesting about Jeffrey Keaton coaching him about father stuff. We're about Dr. Ferguson's father of who he was and back with Jeffrey Keaton's father. If they're similar or maybe not. Uh, what their lives came in when their, when their fathers has changed them. Because we all know what happened to Jeffrey's life with his father. With the audio dramas. And his first appearance in the animated movie, that stuff, or Blood in the Window, that stuff, where he died in that scene. And um, knowing that in the new episode, episode 5, where that's the first appearance of Jeffrey Keaton's real father. Where that person is different from that person. Because fake father is mostly just drunk ever since his war military when he was used to be a soldier, I think, years ago. But he beats down Davy and Jeffrey Hitton all the time. And, um, he was dead in the trailer. And, um, but for Jeffrey's real father, which he is mostly a cult member, which he's been affected or corrupted. Mind control or brainwashed by Zalgo. Which is kind of interesting if it only runs in the Keaton's family only or everyone else. Because we all know back in Zalgo, which affects the Jarvis family. It's not like Keaton's family are the only keys or the only people being corrupted by Zalgo only. Only corrupted by everyone. And we're in episode 3 where. Opening introduced the same character from episode 2, which got a name named Sarge. Which I think it is, because I tried to get things wrong if I had to look back to the credits twice. And somehow he's been followed by something going for Evil Dead style. But who is that following him? It's probably Zalgo, because knowing that the asylum is somehow haunted every time, the location that Sarge is mostly going to. And Zalgo always keeps... Always keep talking him many times around. If there's some choice, if Zalgo might try to corrupt him as well, or just scare him off. Knowing that, if Zalgo wants everybody to just leave Jeffrey alone so he could finally corrupt Jeffrey. And the most good scene of the cameo appearance of Dr. England. 
Only first time, only first time for this scene. Where he managed to meet up with Jeffrey Keaton. With this episode where Jeffrey already meets uh, a nurse, which I mentioned last time. Which is Miss Rachel, which I hope that's a name because somehow I got a little bit few comments I think last time where I got it wrong or something. Where who is the ghost nurse, the mother of Ben, meet Jeffrey. And Jeffrey mentioned about that references and uh, that gives us the point that this already taken place after the some parts of the timeline of the audio drama of the Needles and Smiles. And he mentioned about the pipes or this construction that England just talked about. Of what Jeffrey Keaton saw in that part of the hallway. And when his neck just snapped. Which somehow shocked me the most of seeing that. And noticing that he said something black and whatnot. Which I know, I, I believe in my fear, which Jeffrey somehow sees the appearance or knows some parts of the Zalgo blood. Or whatnot. If that if Jeffrey were in beat Salgo already, who knows? And now we're gonna cut back to Officer Mace, his own house with uh, Sarge, which they talk about random stuff, knowing they just talking about things like how friends always do. And uh, but we won't get to the part where we see a red light, which red light always go with the red eyes, like Salgo or the darkness of hell. And that's probably the first appearance of the demonoid spider Zalgo. And uh, that's when the, the part where Sarge always had been afraid of spiders a lot. Probably when the time when he was a kid. And that part of his fears continues to haunt him. Think of something like how DC Scarecrow give you the fears. And somehow those fears you have once in your childhood are be coming back to you to haunt you forever. Think of something like that way. And something that how back with England and Jeffrey, that the part where Jeffrey said the way he is somehow afraid when he was about to leave the asylum. Something about when he mentioned about his wife. If we haven't heard anything about that yet around the audio dramas. And back to Sarge where we're going for the Zalgo creepypasta movie style, which I wanted to see the freaking sequel so badly, which that was been planned years ago, but didn't, which I'm fine if it's not going to happen, but anyways, back with Sarge, who still have fears of spiders, in which I probably do have fears of spiders too, because knowing how they always crawl around you and bite you, or Going with the mist style where you have these random baby spider eggs popping out of your chest or your back. <sighs> That's disgusting. If you haven't watched the mist movie, you will understand why. Cause those spiders in that movie was <sighs> or any type of spider movies and horrors are freaking terrified when they popping out of your mouth or out of your chest or your shoulders, whatever. Knowing it's kind of creepy for a spider coming inside of you. It's kind of creepy, you know? With Sarge, who's thinking about the house that somehow is haunted. But rather, it's rather the fears that he had. Or rather, Zalgo is haunting him even more with the spider Sarge has been having. And that's the, when we get the first appearance of the spider Zalgo. Which I think I would call it that now. Spider's algo. And we're back with the cassette tape where Dr. Paxton and Dr. Ferguson were matching about Toby Rogers. Where somehow he always been that always been that rude type of person in their time. But somehow went a bit silent when Jeffrey Keaton show up all of a sudden. But anyways, now we're matching even more a bit about Jeffrey Keaton. Where somehow of his acts during the interview, where he acts like a cry or a kid or something, but somehow mentioned about his brain fractures, something that makes him act like a child, going mental. Who knows? Who knows? If it somehow he saw a bit similar acts when he was a kid, back in the flashbacks in the audio dramas. 
like in uh, Jeffrey said of the flashbacks too. Until we're back with Sarge who's mostly got a spider bite. Which I know back in that scene where the first appearance of the demonic spider of Zalgo appears. And somehow, somehow I think it's a bit as a phantom, but somehow it attacks you for real. So you got a wound on your wrist or your hand. But for Sarge, he did got attacked and the bite still shows up to his hand. Knowing that that spider could be real or not, but somehow it is. For some reason that Zalgo can do something like that. But who knows what that bite can do to Sarge lately in the uh, our episodes. If somehow spreads over him, like a corrupt him to his mind, or kills him. And now looking back to cassette tape 4, where more things mentioned for the black, or rather Project C, where they're going to experiment on that for Toby Rogers. Or rather, it's rather the creation of the rig, using this black sludge can do something about it. Or rather, using the black sludge as something useful for corruption. But, knowing that they just mentioned Toby, they're going to use it on him. If that could be the reason to get rid of the pain. No, no, wait. By giving him the pain. Because... So for some reason that Toby doesn't feel pain and using thinking that his black sludge can do something about it. Or maybe not. Until they references another character on Zalgo, which appears in this episode. Jacob Jarvis. That tall Texas chainsaw letterface style big boy. Where he finally gets himself a cameo appearance in this series. Where Father Pleasant mentioned a question to him about if there's anyone that can help him out, a doctor or somewhere to take him to a hospital or something. But they know that he's too big or tall or not, so they had to let him go. How rude. How rude of you, doctors. I will take care of him myself. I don't care if he's tall or big. Knowing that Sarge had to uh, help him out to get out of these, I'm going to take him back home. Until, when I was doing reaction video for episode 4, I somehow missed part of this scene. Where, back in cassette 4, Dr. Ferguson mentioned about England was on a phone in the waiting room, talking to his daughter. And I know it was that he lost his wife. For some reason, not sure how. So that's why it was mentioned in episode 3 of why Dr. F Dr. England left the place so urgently. Because knowing that everybody mentioned his wife, he freaks out or cries about it while he's talking to his daughter. But mostly, her death wasn't just by anything else. It was killed by Toby Rogers and his sister by the car crash on the bridge. And where does the bridge even mention before? Well, I think about something back in the ghost hunting video series that Mr. Baby Cougar did with his friend Luke and Robert. And during in the bridge where some lady who died while falling over the bridge or something over where the ice is. But it's probably different in that style. But knowing that Dr. England's wife was killed by the Rogers. So, knowing that Toby Rogers is in the asylum and England is in the waiting room. But who knows if Toby, Ro if Toby Rogers gave himself a cameo appearance in this series, if David Neer will probably come back, probably to have this, his own footage tested for his own Toby Rogers. Knowing that. If Toby, Toby Rogers shows up for this series, if Dr. England has no choice but to interview with him, knowing that he's going to be the one who killed his wife, which is accidentally, accidentally. So that was kind of shocked. I didn't know about that. And now we're finally getting to see the cameo appearance of Jacob Jarvis, 
which was a total shocked and happy excitement to see one of the characters in the Zago manage to show up in the series. And, uh, he finally got to meet up with Jeffrey after, uh, Sarge left him there when he was, uh, checking up the powers. Because knowing that something just went wrong, knowing that Jeffrey gave him, um, an address and the mask. Knowing that they had to make a deal. If Jacob mostly help him out or not. Jacob did uh, help Jeffrey uh, and take the address that will be useful to the hint of Zalgo movie. That will be leads up to the Keaton's house. But if not, then probably to Zalgo too. If Jacob did survive. We don't know. So Jacob finally got a mask which will suit him for his own upcoming movie, Salgo, which is why he wears mask all the time. And now we're back with our boy Officer Bakes. Doing his own investigation stuff like always in his work. But so this location he's in is mostly where the ghost hunting series was. Where I mentioned about the bridge where that lady was died. And he walked over on the br he walks on the top of the bridge and passed by it. Knowing that he was on a call with his mother and doing the awesome funny line which I love and it's funny like always. He did mention my name on a YouTube channel. Until we were stopped into a scene where the camera lowers down where we see a sewer. But Mr. Bay Googler in his ghost hunting videos did tell a story that this place was used to be a zoo, or this cave was used to be some random animals were uh, like or staying there. That used to be like a zoo area. Until we hear a random sounds coming inside the sewer, and random liquid, which we know that's Salgo, which he always keep picking an eye out over every location where characters are always keep walking at, and knowing that sewer. Is leading towards the asylum, if it could be. And we're back with more scenes where Jeffrey Keaton gave him the mask and mostly the address, but that will probably lead up to Zalgo 1 or 2, but probably Zalgo 1 instead. Because since Jacob did help him out to take the, the strap jacket off of him, knowing that he has a random address under it, probably. And that's when he mentioned about the date and time, which I know is probably going to be. 2015, which that is the same year the House of Jeffrey Killer was, but even Zalgo, and probably the Humanizers. But mostly, why Jeffrey gave some of the address and why he wants him to go there, that will lead up to Zalgo. That's easy. Jeffrey kind of already did meet up with Zalgo in the asylum, knowing that he mentioned about these black merch coming out of the pipes or something. And he come somehow have a talk with Zalgo and knowing that Z that Jeffrey's already been corrupted. That's some some sort of theory. I want to think about it. But anyways, knowing I'm about to laugh even more it, with the excitement, knowing that Officer Mace mentioned my names in this scene when he was walking around the forest at nighttime. But he was mostly still doing his own job investigating around. On why though, like did he got something to think about looking around the forest that was close by the asylum or something that he had his job years ago and that he wanted to go back to what was left of some place that he need to uh, look back to or rather knowing things on rumors going on or knowing that he saw something or hear something which the sounds are probably always by Zalgo like always knowing those or some random sounds coming around the forest. Knowing that Zalgo is somewhere around there. That would lead up to episode 5. And near the ending where Jeffrey was been captured by Dr. Paxton with a syringe. Not by poison, no Jeffrey. Well, of course you might think it could be. But knowing something that some of his blood stream were showing off and... Dr. Paxton sees something in Jeffrey that could be useful for him for some experiments or noticing that what just gave Jeff 
free, which is by Zalgo instead. Or rather, knowing that in Bag and Jeffrey, the wrath of Jeffrey Keaton in the opening where Iron Strike was been made, knowing that the witch, I forgot her name again, and she mentioned about things about Jeffrey Keaton being the chosen one. I don't know what's with the word chosen one lately. But anyways, that Jeffrey Keaton is somehow important a lot. And so he's probably going to be used in future episodes, knowing that it's probably the creation of the rake or something different that Dr. Paxton is going to use Jeffrey on. And now with episode 5, where Sarge has been running out of the forest. For some reason, it's had to do things like after he was somehow he's been chased or attacked by Jacob Jarvis in that time, or somewhere after that. He's probably somehow chased by the sounds of Zalgo. Something odd is going on. But we see a few scenes of a random mouth opening with a smile with black ooze or a black merge or whatever you call it. Knowing something, knowing something, something's odd. If we're probably going to see the evil self of Sarge that Zalgo is using or making. I don't, I don't know. Until we're back with Dr. Paxton. And Jeffrey Keaton with a little bit more interview that Dr. Paxton decided to do with Jeffrey. And we're seeing some of these drawings that he somehow made. And some are familiar. Which one of them is? There is one where a random hooded figure over the right looking at some random shadow over the left. Does that remind you something, folks? Yes. Remember, if you look back to Zalgo, the colorless, the colorless movie, that's black and white. But those deleted scenes show up, which one didn't even show up in the color version, which is somehow interesting. Give a little few more secrets. But that is where the event of that timeline comes up, where Jeffrey meets Zalgo again. Knowing that Jeffy Keaton could have have some similar idea that Anakin has or other characters do, which they have random dreams or nightmares that are the events of the future. You know? You know what I mean? If you have these random flashes coming out of your mind that you're seeing the future in you. Or you're seeing the future. Until we finally meet Jeffrey's father, his real father, in the flashback scenes. Knowing that I always first saw him as a kind man, of course, where he was first mentioned in Jeffrey's Dead, the final sleep around the audio dramas. Until we never even saw his appearance around the audio dramas at all. So it's kind of odd knowing if he's dead. Or he left the town, or he's probably still asleep, or he's sick and died over his cancer or something. Until we're back with the cassette tapes where a bad news happened for Dr. Ferguson, Diana is dead. Which I don't know who Diana is, if she was mentioned before or not around the audio dramas. Because I first thought it was Rachel, but no, the... Because they only mention about the body. The body of Diana. On who kills her? Jeffrey. Knowing that around those spluds around the floor it shows Jeffrey stepping on them. Because Jeffrey did kill her. So, but there's a few bit whispered sounds of a ghost. Which I thought it was Diana or rather Rachel. But I believe it could be Rachel. Yeah, knowing that Rachel died in the 90s and she, and she somehow haunts around the asylum, haunting Dr. Ferguson forever, knowing how much pain she got from him. And now we're back with Sarge and meeting up with uh, Officer Maze, our boy. And um, knowing that he mostly comes inside the house that Officer Maze allows him to. And now mentioning things about the force that Officer Maze is talking about. Which 
We don't know how that happened. In which I thought something had to do about back in episode 4 that Officer Mace was looking around the forest until nothing had happened until now. He mentioned about a random figure that's himself is appearing on the forest. Which is covered with black ooze or blood. And showing claws coming out of his hand. Giving away with a smile like, hello neighbor. How are you today? But anyways, kind of creepy to see your other self who is mostly demonic. Knowing that it's not going to create an evil of yourself. Knowing that you have a little bit of hatred inside of evil. Until another shock happened where Officer Mace, the real Officer Mace, just show up in the door. And he was like, what the frick, Sarge? What are you doing in my house? So yeah, it's odd, you know? Seeing a phantom of Officer Mace that Zalgo used, or rather, because inside of the oven shows a freaking demonic Zalgo spider. Knowing that the spider still haunts him forever for Sarge, if the bite somehow creates hallucinations or something. And now we're back more for Dr. Paxton interviewing with Jeffrey again. We're back with another picture showing two dots, which are mostly doorknobs for a closet. And I believe now we're into another scene where Jeffrey's father appear out of the closet. In which I believe that's the closet back in the house of Jeffrey, the house of Jeff the Killer. Uh, Jennifer, her room, which was used to be David or Jeffrey's room, where it used to have a random closet, but. After she, she was taken to the hospital, uh, her brother was looking around her room for, for some blood around until noticing the closet is somehow had a secret entrance to a cave. Knowing that that is something, which I believe that's where the cave is where Jeffrey's father was working at. That would lead up to the coal mine. Which I don't know if it could be if the coal mines around the tunnels are connected to the Keaton's family's house. Knowing that he is already corrupted by Zalgo or he just wants to, to do this random cold stuff working for him. Yet I don't know how this w works for the whole entire Keaton's family to uh, trade a cult member or something. And knowing that his father it's trying to have Jeffrey Keaton to join the cult, join Zalgo, join the evil side. And together, they can rule the world as father and son. <laughs> Going a little bit of Star Wars stuff right there, yo. Darth Vader and Luke. <laughs> but anyways, he attacks Jeffrey. For thinking if Jeffrey's not following the rules or not doing something right, then he can somehow punish him. I don't know. But say, but he's singing the same lyrics from the Zalgo movie where uh, Grandpa Jarvis is singing, Jesus' blood never found me. Jesus' blood never found me. But yeah, that same lyrics he was singing when he was doing a metal style. Jesus, blood, never found me! Like that, you know? Now he's back being normal and saying sorry to Jeffrey what he just got himself into. Like he said it wasn't him, which he's probably right because Zalgo was somehow controlling him. Because I didn't know that Zalgo can do like that. If Zalgo somehow controls your body brainwashed, mind control, who knows, and he somehow spits out blood, knowing that he has a cancer or whatnot. Because imagine if this could be true or not. If you don't work with Zalgo anymore, Zalgo will silently kill you. Because that would be something different if Grandpa Jarvis somehow runs out of the house for no reason. And we haven't heard of him at all, knowing that he's probably dead out there. So I believe if Jeffrey's father did die a bit, or he probably just spit out blood, a few cancers out of him, I don't know. 
Now he somehow died in cancer in Jeffrey's Dead, the final sleep. So that's what my thoughts and theories around this whole series before episode 6 starts. So, yeah, that's why, because this whole series is mostly about each character, their own stories, what happened to their lives around the past, of, which is now affects them to this very day. Jeffrey, his father becoming corrupted by Zalgo, trying to have him join the cult or whatnot to Zalgo, becoming a monster like him, and he somehow died. And knowing that, why he just move out? Because Jeffrey, David were adopted because they think something what happened to Jeffrey's father or something. And Sarge, knowing that he decided to do everything he can to uh, be normal, to take the job and have taken care of his children. Knowing that his random, this random fight still haunts him because he still has fears over his childhood from the spiders. And Zalgo is doing the same way to haunt him with spiders. Whatever his bite is, somehow like the affection or something that will corrupt him or not or kill him. And Officer May's having problems too, where he needs to discover, need to find out more secrets or something around the forest what's going on lately. And knowing that Dr. Paxton is doing his own projects, but Dr. Ferguson is still having problems with getting haunted by. Uh, Nurse Rachel, and we haven't heard anything yet about Ben, and knowing that Diana is dead, and um, what was it? And Jacob Jarvis was now uh taken back at home, knowing that there's nothing they could do to help him because it's difficult because he's too tall and big, which makes me hate he's not the doctor to do something like that, which is rude. But anyways. So, yeah, that's what my theories and thoughts are for this series. I hope you enjoyed this, folks. And, Mitch Bay Cougar, if there's an art character you've been work, are you going, if there's an art character you're going to make for this series, uh, it has to be a patron or a random worker just randomly just walking by around the hallways or having him sit down at the desk talking to Dr. Ferguson or someone else. You can have me to, uh, be a random character if I had to be a doctor or a patient or a guard or a officer, who knows, or investigator. If you need another character for an actor, you can ask me or you can ask someone else out there. If you need help for that, you can ask me for a spare actor. Knowing that I'm in Massachusetts, so I probably just do myself just sitting out or standing on a wall just talking to a random voice over my computer and talk replies with my lines and yeah if you need an art actor for for a character you're going to make next you can uh ask me if i could be useful if but if not that's fine that's fine but anyways i hope you enjoy this this is lord of flames here i'll see you guys next time bye folks have a wonderful day.